This will be part two of a tour through a cartoon cell focusing on getting and using energy. So we're going to pick up the story with the scene down here, the molecular construction projects performed by various kinds of proteins. These proteins are going to need a supply of ATP energy, and the cell had previously broken down glucose molecules and repackaged the released energy from glucose into ATP molecules that store just the right amount of energy, usable quantities of energy to power this chemistry. So let's see how this process works. So here's a protein and it's specialized to bind two different molecules and make a chemical bond between them. So a cell makes hundreds of different proteins that use nutrients to build a diverse set of molecular parts. So here we have these nutrients, maybe they were imported from the environment as food. Now proteins make chemical bonds by forcing the reacting molecules to share electrons. But the cell must have reserves of chemical energy to power this chemistry. So here we have the reactants up here. They have stuck to the protein. And the protein's job is to make a chemical bond between these two molecules. But that's going to require forcing these molecules together so that two atoms can form a chemical bond. And that's going to require ATP energy for the protein to be able to do that. And the product will detach and float around in the cell. So why do proteins need a supply of ATP energy to do their job? We encountered this in a previous lesson. You'll recall that as two atoms are brought close together, the electromagnetic force will repel them. Electrons are negatively charged, and so you'll have a repulsive force. So it takes energy to push molecules, which are made of atoms. It takes energy to push atoms close enough together to form a chemical bond. And that's where ATP comes into play. ATP supplies the energy so that this protein can do its muscular work. Okay, so here we go. First, the two reacting molecules bind to the protein. So there are two binding sites for just these two molecules. Not any old molecules can bind there, just these two. And that's what makes for the specificity of proteins. They only do certain chemical reactions because they can only bind certain target molecules. Then we have to get a source of energy. The protein has another docking site, another binding site for ATP itself. So recall that ATP carries the energy in this chemical bond right there. <clears throat> That's the energy that will be used to power the chemical reaction between these two uh, nutrients. So the third step then is the high energy chemical bond of ATP is going to be broken. And here we'll illustrate that in this fashion. The ATP molecule, when that bond is broken, it turns into an ADP molecule, adenosine diphosphate, two phosphates. We won't worry about right now where this uh, other phosphate goes. But the key idea is the energy released from the breaking of that bond of ATP. That energy is going to be used to force these two molecules together. And remember, you need energy to do this because uh, the electrons in the, uh, in the molecules are going to repel each other. But if you can force them close enough together, you can get a chemical bond between your two nutrient molecules there. And fifth, the ADP is going to detach from the protein and it will go back to the bank proteins to get recharged with energy. And then the product of the chemical reaction is going to detach from the protein. So the protein now has, has done its job. And finally, the protein is ready to do another chemical reaction. Should it bind two more reactants and have a ready supply of ATP? So the protein does not get sort of a used up or damaged by doing its job. It now is prepared to do the same thing over and over and over again, so long as there are nutrient molecules and a supply of ATP energy. So to summarize then, uh, the energy released from one chemical reaction is used to drive forward a chemical reaction that requires energy. So we're going to release the energy from ATP and use it to make this chemical bond right there. And that required energy because it takes energy to force molecules together to get close enough so that a chemical bond can form. So cells must constantly get energy from their environment because it takes energy to make chemical bonds between molecules.
Now let's go back to follow the path of ADP. Here's ADP right here. So this is the spent energy, you might say. Uh, it has to go back to the bank proteins to get recharged with another phosphate group, thus making it ATP. Let's look at that a little more closely. So there's a really important protein, ATPase, and its job is to stick a phosphate group onto the ADP and that restores the ATP with one dollars worth of energy. Over here on the right, here's the ADP molecule. It's only got two phosphates. Here's that third phosphate. When it gets reattached, then it becomes ATP. Now, for the cell to have the energy to do this chemistry, it's got to continually import food, right? Glucose has to be broken down. That's the energy that powers the bank proteins so they can keep on uh, resupplying ATP energy to drive the chemistry of life. So there are many kinds of proteins that do chemical reactions in this way. And as we said before, that for each kind of protein doing some important chemical reaction, the cell makes many copies of that protein. And this helps to guarantee that the protein will find its target molecules. But in time, proteins get damaged and must be replaced with new ones. Well, the cell has a uh, solution to that problem. Uh, each and every protein in the cell has a recipe for its construction stored in DNA. And so the cell can access that recipe and build new proteins when needed. Now that construction process, by the way, also requires ATP energy. <coughs> In the final lesson in this little energy series, we're going to ask the question, why don't bacteria cells ever grow any bigger? They're always just these tiny little cells. I mean, they can grow, but why don't they keep growing? And the answer has to do with the geometry of bacteria cells and how the bank proteins are positioned in the cell membrane. So bacteria are going to face an energy shortage when they grow. We'll pick that up in the next and final part of this energy series.